is going to go live Saturday, June 25th, because once we do our launch, this is going to be the in, this is going to be placed in the middle of every subdomain lander. So nyc.rhinostreet.com, eugene.rhinostreet.com, all 425 subdomain landers. And uh, the 425 comes from this 425 cities, uh, cities in this nation with a population of 50,000 or plus. Each one of them we own the subdomain lander for, well, the subdomain, and then we created a lander, which is the commercial in the middle, and then the perimeter is 16 photos near and dear to the hearts of, the, of that population. And how I'm able to decide or identify that is the fact that every one of those pictures will be most liked on all the hashtags of Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and whatnot. Um, so those people have plenty of friends. Many people like who those people are. So the belief is that when we go ahead and aggregate 16 of them, any viewer from that community uh, should, should recognize at least one of them. And while recognizing them, this is going to be the commercial playing. And uh, without further ado. Here on Rhino Street, we know you're a superhero. You're a bad guy. You're a yoga. And we can't dance. We're dressing your face. You're a big brick. You're making lines. You're physically You're a waving and a Your co-workers can't stop you. The boss can't lose you. Your lunch only pauses you. Your role morphs on you. Your work day is an exhaustion. You see your future every night. Your wife inside singing. Your family together in life. Your heart is present. Your mind is your time. Your idea will be a huge success. Wall Street companies and all our search engines. Other Wall Street companies pay trillions for our search results. Wall Street companies are bankrupting our main streets by redirecting our sales from our neighbors to their investors. Superheroes search their community. Superheroes buy from their community. Superheroes buy from their community. Superheroes rebuild their community. Superheroes are their community. tell you I love that and again I'm quite partial to it but I really really love that commercial um, and to that point that commercial um, I don't want to say very expensive I don't like talking about money but um, it wasn't free put it that way and it was uh, first class yeah it was professionally done and it took two months to complete that took me I think three weeks of scripting and we got it down to a minute 22. Um, so it's really, really cool. Now, Steve is on with us today. And before we welcome him on, who is our head of app development and coin payment system, which everyone's quite um, intrigued with, we're gonna take another five minutes just to kind of chat back and forth and give a couple of updates. Last week, we outreached to everyone. Zoom allows you to share sound directly, otherwise you lose much of the effect. Oh, okay. Well. That's good to know. Uh, so we'll do that. Thank you, Don. Um, as you know, last week we went ahead and um, had uh, opened it up for everyone to schedule a call uh, to go ahead and book with me personally uh, to go ahead and share with you where we are, well, where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. That's because we set that launch date, it then meant everything has shifted because that was the escalation points in our business plan. Meaning once that, once that focus shifted, it was no longer selling the coin to raise money for investment, but we wanted to be able to reward the coin to nudge behavior to grow. And in doing so, to go ahead and complete that launch that we want to do, the super duper launch where it's on Pandora, Sirius, regular TV commercials, uh, 425 Facebook campaigns going, which we already have, the reps and everything signing off on it, because. As, uh, as I was talking to one of our partners the other day, I go, I got to go. Facebook's on the other line. He goes, Facebook calls you? I go, yeah. He goes, okay, I'll talk to you later. And it was a cool moment, right? I'm not like the most special person. 
but Facebook does call me. I see on the uh, caller ID, Facebook. Um, so that's really, really cool. So we're working hand in hand with them. Um, obviously with Instagram, uh, WhatsApp, a whole bunch of really cool stuff. That being said, after last week was completed, we got to 80% of our goal. So for those that know how much we're looking to raise, I could simply do a little bit of math. You'll allow me not to say numbers out loud again, which is really, really good because we're like uber well-funded and there's nothing, there's nothing that can stop us. We have the team, we have the money, we have the vision, we have the assets, we have the execution plan. The only thing that can stop us is laziness. And my team will tell you, I just... I lead by example, right? Like yesterday I was a little tired and one of our, my team members was like, oh, it's nice to see that you're human. And I said to him, now that's a challenge. And I, and I didn't stop from that point forward. So, you know, don't poke the crazy person. Um, so we have the money. Now going forward, what is going to happen, uh, as of tomorrow morning, we're going to send you the link to go ahead and download the app, which you're going to see today. You're going to be part of the test group which means you're going to get first look of everything. Being part of the test group and uh, building the relationship that we have through all these years, really, is that we always, always, always um, and are asking for your honest advice, not your um, flattering advice. Because when everyone inputs their advice collectively, we can make the best product. I can promise you, I do not want to walk around with a pink shirt with a big stain in it just because you felt like being nice and telling me and your shirt looks great, not interested. I grew up in a really big Italian family and if somebody didn't say something rude, I felt like I wasn't loved, right? So, hey, Anthony, you smell, love you too, mom. That's how we were. Um, so that's happening tomorrow and the app hopefully will be a full release and like, well, I guess it'll be fully released when we go ahead and launch, but this is the first step. Um, our other team members are working on the e-learning platform. We have 40, we have 40 e-learning proprietary uh, curriculums that we're putting out. So let's say, for instance, one is dog grooming, right? Well, uh, the first step is learning the SBA rules, which we spend so much time teaching everyone. Then the next uh, eight steps we'll be teaching you actual dog grooming, right? So maybe we'll go ahead and procure some really good content from others that know how to do it, whether it's YouTube or people we know. There'll be um, us actually creating some of the content. Then the last step will actually be a test where you're going to be tested on the whole curriculum. And it is a pass fail, right? Like if you fail, you need to go do it again. But if you pass, you are then going to get the Rhino Diploma. That Rhino Diploma is then awarding you a one-on-one -on -one call with us, in which case that call is consulting when you're going to open this business. And um, in when you're going to open it, we're going to coordinate you to be the number one search result in your community for that entire week. So regardless of who searches what, the number one result will be congratulations to Stephanie. She um, she completed her curriculum and she now owns the most amazing dog grooming place. Go check her out. Now, of course, everyone that sees that is gonna know Stephanie. They went to elementary school with Stephanie. Someone had the hots for Stephanie. Someone's Stephanie's brother. Someone's Stephanie's teacher. Everyone knows Stephanie because everyone is part of that community. It's only the 20 miles that are going to see that. So when they see dog grooming by Stephanie Franklin, they're gonna say, oh my God, I can't believe she, she finally did it. I wanna go check it out, right? Because when you keep things localized, people actually care. They look for reasons to consider you, not look for reasons to not consider you. And that's a very different thing. For those that say, hey, listen, we want bigger radiuses. Well, there's other sites for that, right? So we want to be the site. We, not the site, right? Like we want to be the platform that does one thing really good while other people do other things really good, which means that people have choice. If you want this, you choose here. If you want this, you choose there. Um, so that's going to, uh, in fact, John has already put out the template. Now we're populating it. Uh, we're completing all 425 of those subdomains. I'm the one dragging on that because last week I was um, taking 76 different half hour plus phone calls. And that's not uh, an excuse, right? Like that was work, but I've overly 
I've overly managed, I overly booked myself times three. I looked at my wife yesterday and I said, if there was two more of me, I still wouldn't get my work done. So now there's nights I just don't sleep. Um, so I promise you I'm okay, but I am going to go on vacation at some point. Um, and just like sit on the beach. Like I looked at my wife this morning. I was like, babe, we're going to go on vacation. She's like, when? I was like, in like three months. She's like, you're, you're, you're hopeless. Whatever though, right? Um, also, uh, V is not only doing a fantastic job on concierge, she also reached out to all of our new rhinos, but uh, new rhinos and rhinos alike that participated in the last round of fundraising. And also she is helping us go ahead and procure uh, all the data that we're looking for. So as everyone knows, every city, we are collecting 2,500 data sets for first name, last name, email, organization, job title, zip code, and phone number. But it's not that simple because we want to make sure that we have the teachers, the PTA, the Mothers Against Strong Driving, the YMCA, the BFW, um, the principal, the mayor, the count, uh, city council, um, the urgent care clinics, the local media, the local newspaper. Um, what am I missing? And some other stuff, right? So. Because what we believe when we go ahead and email all of those people, they not only have a, a service in mind that they service their community, they're there to do good for others, but they by default and by definition, they speak to a lot of people in a given day. So if we're confident that our, our idea and our vision is community centric and something that with awareness uh, can really go ahead and change lives, then they are the perfect conduits to go ahead and reach out to. So we're certainly doing the work. Um, and then Steve, who you'll meet, will be doing the payment system and the coin. Everyone loves the coin. Coin is quite important. Um, and just for, just because I want to say it, I'm watching a stock market get annihilated again today. And every single person that I've spoken to on Rhino all said the same thing. And this is the only investment I have that's up. Because every equity holder of Rhino collects one, hey, is that Aurora? Oh, will you be listing the local nonprofits? Yes, I will. Uh, thank you. I, by the way, I got a chance to meet Aurora. She is like super duper fantastic. So her name is Aurora from and does yoga. So you put that together and you imagine what the personality is, times that by 10, that's her. So um, glad to hear it. Thank you. You're very, I know, I, she said that when I was on the phone with her. But she, she was like more chatty than, she was more energetic than me. And everyone knows like that's impossible, but she does it. Anyways, enough about you, Aurora, more about me. So um, the payment system is quite important. And oh yeah, so every equity holder had said, Anthony, uh, this is the only investment I have that's up because every equity holder gets 1% per month. <laughs> you keep it that, well duh, 1% uh, per, well, you know, I'm Rhino, right? So I, I speak for us, so about me is about you, right? Uh, they're making 1% compounded a month, plus profit distributions, and the coin has gone up one cent every single month. So, you know, one cent to two is 100% to threes, you know, you do the math. So without further ado, I'm going to share this call with Steve, in which case you're going to the, for the first time, in the, actually, should I? So let me show you one more thing, sorry, Steve. I know Steve is getting excited over there, uh, but I want to show one thing. So let me just see if it's working, right? Just so I can put my team on the hot seat for a second. Um, so before this call, I had spent yesterday and today um, scripting email copy as well as recording this video right here. Because we're going to start populating the search engine as early as this week. And well, actually, we're already populating it, right? Um, but like more and bigger numbers. And when people come to this page, they want to know how Rhino Street works. We have a big green blink and arrow. We have it highlighted, big print. So this is where you would go. Um, it took me literally an hour to record a two-minute video because apparently I, I don't know. Maybe I get shy these days. So I believe this is it, I hope so. Welcome. Um, okay, so we're good. Wait, so actually Don shared 
but I could share audio through this, right? So share computer sound. Let's see, what's my passcode, right? You ever do your passcode and you realize your fingerprint has been your passcode and you don't remember your passcode, but I did remember my passcode. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, I thought he actually was able to read my passcode. All right, so this is the video that is now Learn How Our Stream Works. I am very tempted to do it over again. Uh, so please, if you like it, tell me. If not, tell me. Welcome to Rhino Street, where we have developed a technology. Oh, no. So that's. So I can't do that because I have sound over there. All right, let's do this again. Welcome to Rhino Street, where we have developed the technology to instantaneously reverse the cycle of money from our local computers. And it's as simple as changing your toothpaste. You see, a search engine is a software system designed to search the internet in a systematic way. Um, to match your search term with the best search results. Now, search engines make money by directing searches to click on ads. These ads are displayed on the search engine results page as top search results. The searcher naturally then clicks these paid ads, believing that they are instead the best search results. In fact, this year, $240 billion will be spent buying our search results. No local business can compete with that budget. That's $101.9 million worth of goods and services siphoned from every single county. Rhino Streets is a nonprofit search engine engineered to deliver you the choice to search only your specific local community. Here's the three ways Rhino Streets accomplishes that goal. Rhino Street disqualifies all large corporations from being a search result. Rhino Street calculates search results to be within a 20 mile radius of the user. Rhino Street invented a payment system designed to value transactions in a single asset, which represents the total value of Rhino Street, and that asset belongs to you. You see, when you purchase from paid ads, your money funds for paid ads. When you purchase from your local community, your money funds your schools. Our purchases have been the main cause of hurting our communities. Rhino Street solves that as easy as changing your toothpaste. Use Rhino Street first to search your community first. At the bottom right corner, you'll see your option to list your business and the option to suggest your favorite businesses. In listing your business, you'll instantly become a search result. By suggesting your favorite businesses, you'll be inviting your friends to do the same. In completing either option, you'll be awarded your share of Rhino Street. You can suggest as many businesses as you like, and you'll be awarded that many times. Celebrate your local community. We're waiting. Welcome to Rhino Street. So I was a little against that. I thought it was bad, but now that I watch it, I think it's not so bad. Um, wife said it was a nine out of 10, and I don't know if she was simply just uh, telling me what I want to hear, but if she did, that would be the first time. Um, okay, cool. So I want to go ahead and find Steve. Oh, I'm seeing myself talk, okay. And I want to welcome him on. So if I go to Steve and I go promote to panelists. So Steve, I believe in promoting you to panelists. You now have the ability to share screen. Uh, let's hope that works. Um, it's, it's not letting me show my video. All right, so let me do... So I'll make you co-host and that might solve that. Okay. Uh, Alexis says it's a seven or eight. Tough cookie that Alexis. Hey, Steve's on the call. How are you? Hey, good. How is everybody? No, no pressure, but there's 75,000 <laughs> people on today. Well, it's good to be here with all the rhinos and <laughs> um, I'm excited to show what we've been working on with the app development and what you will soon be testing, hopefully. Yeah, cool. Um, All right, so then you know why don't you just take it away and I'll be a part of the audience pretty much. Okay, I'll just share my screen here and yeah. walk through a little bit of the app. Cool. All right, so these are the databases where some of the information goes and flows in through. Um, 
as the app is collecting data or editing. Um, and here we have a whole bunch of code, but the actual app is emulated on this little phone emulator here on my Android. So I'll go ahead and log in as a test user that I've already created. Um, I do kind it of- It's amazing to go... how much code you have in the background. I always feel like it's like wallpaper, but it's stuff that you actually like made and use. <laughs> It's, it is a lot, it gets overwhelming because like even that, this view is just like one file, but the whole app is like all these files. Oh my God. That's it's insane. a lot. Um, yeah, and there is one thing I wanna show. So before I get into that, I wanna reload the app because I wanna show the splash screen. Oh, love that. All right, and so then you go in and I can log in and I'll just type, it brings up the um, keyboard, but when you're actually on your phone, this will be a much more native experience where the keyboard is where you type. Um, and everybody will see my password. It's super secret. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think I clicked on that by accident. So the first thing is you, you come into the home screen and what we wanna do is we wanna filter out a featured list of local businesses based on your 20 mile radius. Um, so right now it's just showing all users and that's just for testing purposes, but we will be built, building out more enhanced functionality there. And the featured is just a sliding view of tiles where you can actually look at a business profile. Um, so I made a test app just to test multiple users within the application. And um, before I go too far into there, I just wanna to touch more on the home screen. There's also this shop local, which is just pulling directly from the search engine and what this would also be is related to your 20 mile radius so when you first open the application you'll see a permission prompt uh, that you typically see in in applications um, this application would like to use your location and then you can grant it or if not manually enter a zip code okay so that would change these results to be relative to your actual local community. Um, and now I can go back into the view of a profile. So the avatar image here is actually a link to the viewing of the profile, but there's a little bit more here. Um, this is the business name. What we want to do is have the business name by business owner. And oh, yeah. So I, I think uh, I was talking to Ralph earlier, and we believe that'll be ready for tonight. But just to give everyone a certain background on that, like when you go to Google or Yahoo or whatnot, and you put a search term in, you get a whole bunch of search results, but you don't actually know any of them. And I feel like we've kind of got nurtured that that's okay. Nowhere else in life do you just walk into a dark room and not know anything, especially where you're putting your credit card. So by a as, as part of having a 20 mile radius of all your search results, the presumption is you at least know at least some of them. Um, and if you're a business owner, you want people to know your name. It's not a secret, you're not a non-public figure. In fact, most people walk around with business cards that say, you know, Anthony Kalishon, business owner, right? Um, which I don't, but that's, mine says happiness engineer, just to give you a certain insight. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that, Steve, that's what it says. But um, most people have business owner. So what we wanted to do was to go ahead and, and share that more. We want the companies, we want the businesses to say Rhino Street by Anthony Caldeshone. And the, the self-regulation of that is twofold. One, people are more inclined to take a, uh, to go ahead and click it because they're from your local community and they have some memory of you or they want to know you. Uh, everyone is liked by someone, everyone's remembered by someone, 
So just the behavioral science of it is going to get you clicks and people looking at it. But secondly, when you know the only people looking at your business are your neighbors and they know your name, you're going to make your business as credible and as, as wonderful as possible. Because if you think that you're going to go ahead and use Rhino Street as your vehicle to scam people, um, I can't go ahead and police that to a micro degree. You know who can? Your own community. When they see um, ABC Toys by Mark McGrath and they're like, he never even gave me a toy. They could go knock on your door. They could call Mark. In fact, they could call your mom. Hey, Miss McGrath, you know what your son's doing? So that was for many reasons. And, and those are me sharing those ones playfully, but there is a lot of science behind it. And, though, and even more reasons that you can likely come up with is why that's going to say your first and last name. Um, so I just want to butt in for a second. So take it over, Steve. Sure, that's great though. Um, it, it'll really tie things together, I think. So once the business name or the business owner name is there, um, then following that is the summary. And I just kept it brief for this one. It's just a testing app, just to test some functionality. Um, I do have another profile that I can show in a second. So if I actually click on this avatar, you see just little warnings here. You see um, the profile view of somebody's actual business. And this is the business name. And we built in a functionality for um, business owners to add business um, pictures or photos that they think represent their business in, in a good light and they want to share. So we're, I think we're going to limit that to um, 10, Anthony, is that correct? Yeah. And actually, so to go ahead and add to that, when we were talking about this Monday, we decided that Many businesses feel the pressure of having to constantly add content, that if you don't add content, you're forgotten. And then in the, in the pressure of adding content, what content is good? Is it you laughing and having a glass of champagne? Is it you working the factory line? Is it you hanging out with your team members? And in that, in that calculation of what's the best content and how often to post, you now are pressured to become your own marketing firm. And your expertise is not in marketing or else you'd have a marketing company, right? So what we wanted to do along the lines of those that remember Rhino Traffic was to have it very uniform, but not uniformity to go ahead and, and discourage disparity, but uniformity in the sense of taking the pressure off everyone in the sense that your profile picture will be of your face, will be of you, people like you, which is why they're going to your business. You get the best business in the world, but people don't like you, they're not going there. And then we want to go ahead and suggest for the tiles. So this is going to be pre-populated with 10 tiles. One will say, take a picture of you with your team. Take a picture on a busy day. Take a picture of being silly, right? The, the things that show who you are. But in doing so, in the sense that you don't have to continually add content because it's just 10 photos, you can go ahead and make sure they're the 10 best photos. So when your 10 best photos match up against someone else's 10 best and they're in particular uh, uh, in particular categories like your best smile, your best product, things like that. It allows a user to go to your page and know who you are, know what you do and and your page does not get awarded or 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 penalized because you didn't post the picture of you at the Yankees game because you were working all night in your, in, in your office, right? So we want to go ahead and too much friction to get on. So I wasn't able to read the whole thing. Let me see what Don wrote. Um, but the point is that's how that's going to be. Uh, let me just read what Don wrote. Uh, too much friction to get on board if those are required. Business people are often too busy to take 10 photos. Uh, no, no, so they're not required. They're suggested. Uh, so to Don's point, that is a lot of friction. But we want to go ahead and suggest it so that in the photo section, by default, no one feels pressure. By default, everyone knows next steps. Because as a business owner, when you get on something, it's great to get it, but now what do you do with it? So we want to make sure that in navigating best practices, 
that we share those best practices with everyone in a very obvious way. So if you want to post 10 pictures of your dog, God bless. No one's going to stop you. Um, but if you want to post 10 pictures that we believe are in best practice, that is going to allow you to be part of something larger, uh, that's what we're going to offer to you. Um, so take it away, Steve. Sure. Um, so as you saw in the previous screen, this, this image is what shows for my, my business um, because it's my first image. Um, actually, I can't view this profile on. I'm logged into a different account. So let me log in to the one that we were just viewing and I can show you um, how you can actually change those pictures. Okay, so this is like the first image in your uploads. So what we wanna do is um, allow prioritization or a sort order to allow you to maybe drag and drop in a view like this, where you see your images and you can change them. Um, everything here is editable and will take effect in the app view. So this is more of like your profile edit view where you can change your information um, and you can add images here. This just brings up a photo browser. I don't actually have many photos on this device because it's just an emulator. So what you would typically see is all of your photos. You can navigate through your your device directories and everything, or you can just cancel out. Um, the avatar is something editable. So once you pick a photo, you can crop and select that photo and it will take effect. So what we have there is um, more of like, the users or the business owners control over their profile. What we saw here is a view of the profile where this is somebody who's just looking at, at your profile. This is where they'll see information about you and they have the ability to message here. So what this does is this will bring up um, a direct message chat between the two users. And this is a, a hey Steve. Before before you continue, I just want to ask a question real quick because Don was asking a question in the chat. If somebody wants to go ahead and change their business info in real time, um, I I responded that you could do that in the app, the page that you were showing. Um, so a is that correct? And if not, correct me. And secondly, um, where can you do that on desktop if someone doesn't have the app? So I don't think the website has this same capability yet, but it's it's all in place back end. So everything okay. that is is doable in the app is doable desktop. And that is correct that it is real time. So what's happening, um, I can actually show over here, this is like a log of everything that's happening. Um, I will change this to testing. And you see Airtable updated. And then if I go to Airtable, it changed it to testing. So a more live view of that would be something like that. So it oh, just so immediately, cool. immediately goes to the um, our source of truth, the, the, the Airtable database, where our actual search engine pulls results from. You know what's so cool about that? So every search engine to date, I'm not sure how you could change your business summary, but I, I don't think it's that easy. Um, and also we, we allow, so actually on the app, can we also allow the, cause we, we offer someone to list their three 
to suggest three key terms for their business in the list your business portion. Um, in the app, can we allow them to uh, edit that as well? Yes, absolutely. That's um, actually right here. It's just empty right now. So the field is um, not there. And I was working on website as well. So it's a little tricky, but. I just don't want to show it if it's not going to work, but there we go. So website can flow in. Um, and that's that's an interesting part of the profile because as, as a user signs up, they're not asked for all of this information. So some of this information is additive. Once you get into the app, you can edit and, and add like, like um, the attachments, for example. They start out populated empty, but you can build your profile out. Cool. Um, and after the chat, and uh, after the chat, I want, well, actually, I guess I could touch on it now. So when you go ahead and sign up to the app, you also get um, assigned your wallet ID. And your wallet ID is where the coin's going to get distributed once it goes live. Um, if you could just go ahead and, and share that I'm either correct or incorrect, but that's also a super important feature of signing up for the app. Because the app is going to get, the first upgrade to the app is the wallet, and we'll go into that in a little bit, the payment functions and whatnot. So when you sign up for the app, you get your wallet ID, and then all the coin that's been ledgered that you own will then get deposited into your wallet ID, hence your app, through the source of truth that will just manually populate, right? Yes, that's, that's correct. And everything will be within the app so that all transactions and balance and everything will be viewable. Um, I think when you see a profile screen like, like this, I think there should be just some kind of management to bring you out to a separate wallet screen because the okay. wallet has so many um, inputs and, and just functions that I think it deserves its own screen. Hey, listen, you're, you're the man with the super big brain. Whatever you say, I'm going to just say yes to. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, all right. Show us chat. Oh, yeah. So chat is, is a direct message right now. And these are just the two chats that I have going. We do have um, an indicator that shows that I'm typing. But we want that to be so that you see that somebody else is typing. So it is, it is like a real-time chat where... There are a couple things that I will be adding to this, like an avatar image um, pulling from the profile that we were just viewing. It'll show your avatar image and it will also um, allow for real time communication. So so as you're chatting back and forth, it's it's not like you have to refresh or anything. It just. It shows up. That's so cool. Um, and also for everyone that loves the gifts, because I've had plenty of conversations with just gifts. Actually, I had a friend back in the day that we decided that we were never going to type a word again. And we actually had whole conversations with them. Um, I see that we have them available, but I'm not sure that we could put them up just yet. Um, if not, just uh, if, if that's the case, just let us know. And then gifts are probably going to be you know, right around the corner, right? Yeah, gifts. I think I can implement that today and have have some testing there before we send it out for the test. Yeah, groups. let's 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 do that before we send it out because if I know the rhino crowd, they're just going to be like, "Whoa, they're going to send rhinos. They need to have a rhino gift to send." <laughs> yeah, right now it just seems like it's it's a permission thing. So, um, yeah. it it's like along the way, it's almost there. I just have to kind of nudge it. Yeah, um, I love it. All right, cool. And that that's a good segue actually to the nudge of business or nudge someone to become a business, uh, become a search result. And that's what this center floating button is. This brings up a little modal with a few um, sub menus or sub pages where you can manage your business. This brings you to the profile that we've already reviewed. 
And if you wanted to start a new business, this brings you to like almost a tutorial on the steps and guides you through. Um, everything is in accordion clickable so that you can, you can read it in chunks and everything moves through there. So um, I believe we'll add some functionality there to just finalize that process. Yeah, I also want to get with you and collab a little bit on this UI and copy because this was like, this was like written like two months ago and I love you for having it. But as I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh my God, I, I'd probably write something different now because we've made so much progress. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll change that a little bit. And then if you could let us know the functionality in terms of we'll have those 40, um, those 40 uh, programs with modules. I remember talking to John about it yesterday and I think we said rather than weighing the app down with extra you know, memory or whatnot, we were going to allow it to bring us over to a subdomain we'll make like elearning.rhinostreet.com. If that's correct, just let me know. Otherwise, correct me. Yeah, that's that's great. And I can actually show real quick what that would look like, um, taking a little detour here. Oh, if, cool. If you click on um, one of these search results, it opens a, it's not like a full browser. It's not like Google or anything. It's an in-app browser where it takes you to the actual website for that search result. I'm envisioning something very similar for the e-learning. I love it. Where yeah, I saw John, I saw John coding and everything yesterday. And, you know, our conversation started with him uh, asking me how I felt about Udemy. And I told him I actually own programs on Udemy. I love it. I think it's a great learning um, platform. And he goes, oh, I really like it too. Can we go ahead and use that as inspiration? Uh, so I know that the, uh, the portal for the e-learning is going to be really impressive. That's so great. Hopefully, yeah. And with this functionality, it should keep you in the app. Oh, so cool. That, that way you're not like bouncing around and there's not too much friction there in that way. Um, so yeah, then I wanted to show the last piece here in the nudge, nudging of becoming a business. This is to add your business or um, add a friend's business, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, so and we'll just change the title to suggest favorite business. Yeah, um, and this is going to prompt an email out to the business owner to actually approve or opt in if they want to become a search result. So, so to that point, um, I just want to share with the audience that uh, have I ever called where I know the audience. I, I feel like I'm really part of the audience right now <laughs> because I am. But um, so we were on a call with Salesforce yesterday, and they. So we have a nine week build out with them. And of course, anyone that knows me is like nine weeks, Anthony's probably like getting going to go great. But the everything they have is actually that impressive. So we accepted it, but in accepting it, we're realizing that our build out is not um, parallel. So we want to go ahead and announce and offer like a new reward program, in which case we'll be able to uh, tally. So, Alexis recommends Bob to join, and this is all Bob's stuff, in which case Alexis gets an email like, hey, Alexis, really great job. We got it. We're sending Bob the message now. And then Bob would get it from like th this. Uh, we would email Bob from here. Hey, Bob, your friend Alexis uh, asked that we reach out to you. She loves this about your business and would like you to join Rhino Street. In which case that email Bob gets is an interactive email. So that form that Alexis filled out will be the email, in which case Bob could actually change the, um, change the content within each data line and press accept in the email. He's never going to be taken out of email and go to a, a, a website. Um, so that is being built out in short between now and probably three weeks. It'll be Bob will get the email and then he'll respond or Bob will get the email and go to the website. We're doing workarounds, but the final product is going to be the most seamless, like beautiful. Okay, Bob, just click the email and go. Because once Bob accepts it, then we list him as a live result 
And now, obviously, with that least amount of friction, someone like Alexis or someone like anyone has real power in terms of what they can single handedly do for Rhino Street, because we believe each person will likely recommend at least three. But if we bring the friction down so low that each person could uh, convert two and a half, three rather than one and a half, two, that exponential effect really, you know, uh, covers the nation in, in like a month or two. Um, so that's just a little commentary on that. And actually, uh, before I let you have it back, Steve, I'm reading Don, and he was asking me before, and I was just waiting till uh, you finished presenting. Um, this is all great features for the mobile app, but we wanna have this as a desktop version as well. I know we have this all in the background, but can we go ahead and set up something parallel, like a login that someone can have on the desktop? Yeah, so the way that I actually built this, this application is it's cross-platform. So it can compile out to Android, iOS, and web. Um, I wasn't envisioning doing a web output, but it's not something that's um, too difficult to manage with what we have right now. Amazing. Yeah, because uh, Don was making a point, there is a certain um, there is a certain audience that might not be as computer or as tech savvy as as the younger folk that are going to be, you know, uh, quite natural to this in the sense of, at least in my vision, when I think about community and block parties and main streets, that was all kind of invented years before we, you know, messed it up with the Internet. So I think the people that this will resonate to the most naturally might also be a population that isn't as comfortable with mobile. Um, so if we could go ahead and make sure that we um, clone it to web, um, I, I do want I, I do want that. Okay, yeah, definitely. Um, and that that brings up a good point about the user interface. Um, some things would change in that regard. This is definitely a mobile portrait layout. Um, we would be able to tailor it to be more of a desktop user interface where you get a better experience on on the computer um okay. amazing other little things like like i'm not the greatest at um design so i i tried to lay this out my best but i think i'm going to circle back with the other developers and just see where we can land on a so actually i want to share with everyone so the test the test feature that you made um if you could just kind of speak to that, because I, I believe what I remember you saying is we can have an unlimited amount of people testing simultaneously and offering real time advice that we could actually accept and implement immediately and push out that newer version, meaning the the participants that participate in this test will actually be part of the DNA of what it ends up looking like. Yeah, that's correct. Um, it's. I'm blanking on the name right now. It's a Microsoft backed service that allows for mobile app deployment. Okay. And um, there's a few things like analytics, crash analytics, it's called when, when something goes wrong, it tells the development team specifics, um, log information like that so that we can actually debug and fix it accordingly. Um, also, I believe it adds a direct interaction for the test group to be able to provide feedback like you're talking about. That's amazing. Yeah, and, and we'll set that up and get the links out for tomorrow so that everything is ready to test and, and we have the group going. Cool, um, I'll go ahead and send that in the morning then and really nudge everyone to sign up, sign up. Uh, there's like 1,100 Rhinos that own coin, there's about 14,000 that open our emails. I think we could most likely probably get like 200 as a starting test group um, naturally. And then the rest might have to take a little nudging, which everyone knows Anthony's not shy to do at this point. Uh, so we'll try to get you three, 400. Um, but yeah, that's that. And when you're, when you're done presenting the app, and I always feel like I cut you off because I'm always thinking the next thing. But if you could just kind of offer like some initial commentary on the coin and the payment system and um, conceptually what you envision or what's possible, everyone's gonna know there's still gonna be 
like we still got to do it. So um, there's stuff that will change, but from the horse's mouth, basically, because that's that's your department. So everyone hears from me, but to hear it from you is okay. That's that's the person actually making it. So if you could just share a little bit uh, conceptually uh, where your mind's at with that, I think that would be super cool to maybe end off on today. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like that we went through the app pretty well and we'll only get more feedback as we go. So about the coin and the payment system, um, as mentioned, everything will be built into the app, the wallet, which will manage transactions. Um, you'll be able to see your balance. You'll be able to send and withdraw. And what we're thinking is that we're gonna use something called the Binance Smart Chain. And the Binance Smart Chain allows you to create what's called a BEP20 token. And it's it's a little different than a, um, a coin in, in that it's on another blockchain, if that makes sense. So instead of like creating an entire ecosystem of a blockchain, you're more utilizing something that's already in place and already has a lot of volume and, and movement. And what that what that allows us to do is become a listing, a listed coin on their exchanges. Um, because it's Binance, they're pretty well known as an exchange, but they do do a lot more in the way of allowing custom creation of tokens using something called smart contracts. And the smart contract would allow us to basically allocate a total amount of coin and govern the rules of the issuing of that coin. So that smart contract is something that can't be edited after its creation. So once it's out there, that's the rules for the coin. And I think that that approach should take not, not as long as really it sounds probably about three to four weeks before we actually have token and wallet and everything working seamlessly. Cool. Um, so what I was able to share with everyone during the week was um, we're going to calculate what we believe our initial demand to be and create the supply accordingly and then undersupply the market going forward by like 10%. So if we believe weekly demand is going to be a million dollars per se, then we want to supply the market with 900,000 coin so that the path of least resistance is a coin always going up higher in value, which allows businesses to own it as an asset, allows it to be saving and investing and blah, blah, blah. Um, the one thing I do want to touch on is the main function of the coin is that it's going to be facilitating all the transactions on the platform. So as a function of a business that's on the platform, it will be a payment system that we will uh, offer and we will ask you to opt into. Now, not to put you on the spot because I think we're still trying to explore the answers, but um, in your estimation, the friction level of that, right? Like, is that something that we'll be able to just allow businesses to absorb? Is that something we'll have to say to a business for those that have PayPal, opt into it here. If you have you know, Stripe, opt into it here. Or what do you envision the permission being on our payment system, being on our businesses? Because if I would, well, I am me, right? So like my net worth is in coin. That's super important because that is the differentiating factor from us to everyone else, um, to have a growing platform, to have a growing tokenomics basically and all of it is owned by for the people it's for so the businesses that participate on rhino street own the coin and their participation actually increases the coin so if everyone does it together you basically guarantee yourself a trillion dollar asset that you didn't know you already had so i want to go ahead and put some color to that so whatever whatever part of it we still have to explore and you don't know definitely say that but in terms of where you kind of feel or what you sense when you hear that 
Um, just some, I guess, initial commentary. Right. So the goal, if I'm understanding, is to be able to withdraw your coin or, or convert coin to cash. Is that well, correct? That's, that's part of the goal. The goal is to make sure the goal is that the business transactions are backed by the coin. So for instance, I give you $10, but in transit, it buys $10, sells $10 of coin, and you get the $10. And I have shared with everyone, we're not charging transaction fees, but there will be a natural uh, bid, bid and ask, like a, a natural spread. So the $10 might be $9.70, which everyone is okay with, if those transactions are happening because they own the coin, the coin's getting transacted, the coin is, is, is either even or a net buyer because as a business, I can't opt into uh, the coin buying less than $10 in transit, but I can opt into me selling less than $10 because I want to keep a dollar. So the coin can either be consistent or net buyer. And then when we undersupply the market, those market uh, functions in aggregate push a coin higher, push an asset higher. And when the asset is owned by everyone, then everyone says, oh my God, look at my money going up. How do I do more of it? And when everyone starts doing it, you know, you remember Dogecoin or, or Shibu or whatever? Yeah. Like, imagine that, but everyone together with something that has real backing. Like we're going to be what people only dreamt Bitcoin could be, but in sharing that vision, which everyone is rightly excited about, um, we do need to also get the go ahead from our tech department. So with that being the goal and vision, uh, where is your mind at uh, in terms of what the execution is gonna look like? So I think it, it involves a layer of translation. And there are third parties that allow for things like just like um, payment output and payment translation between different currencies. So I think we would have to integrate with something. One that I've been looking into is called Forte. Okay. And um, what that what I'm envisioning is that a user, a business owner, would be able to enter their desired output payment method or methods and also input. So you would have the ability to buy and sell within the app. Um, all transactions through the app and through the service would go through that translation layer where the coin is acting as a vehicle for the currency. So. If, if the user receives the coin, it's their choice then for what they want to do. So basically, so basically it kind of acts like, um, like, a, like a clearing firm almost. Like I'm selling this, this uh, buyer is giving me this money, but I'm putting Forte or something in the middle of it. So it goes through them. And then when I receive the outcome, I could decide whether I want to sell the coin or, or, or keep the coin. That's what I'm envisioning, yes. Okay. The one thing I did tell everyone is that in that case, we're going to add a layer of code that allows the user to automatically, to, to proactively uh, select selling 100% so that we can remove market risk. Because I don't want someone collecting a hundred thousand coin because they're being a part of the platform, but they really want a hundred dollars. And then God forbid at the end of the day, it's $90. And they're like, Oh my God, I, I lost 10% of my sales for what reason? So I want them to be secure in the sense that they could go ahead and, and select any, any, any coin that comes in automatically goes to dollars so that they could, um, so that they could, uh, uh, be safe from market risk. Uh, is that okay? Is that something? Yeah, yeah. That would just be an option on the receiving end. When when you receive payment, um, how would you like to receive it? Love it. And, huh. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Keep going. I'm just like oh. that was a good huff. 
Oh, okay. Um, yeah, if if we if we want to, we could add say three fields. Um, a hundred percent coin, a hundred percent um whatever currency is relevant to you. Um and then maybe a custom field where you say a, a percentage of that to break down. Like say I want 50% in coin. Right. Oh let me see what Don wrote. How about an auto stop that converts to dollars of coin? Oh so Don's like one of the best traders I know. So he's essentially saying, well, what if I want to collect the coin only if it's going up? And the way he would do that is, all right, if the coin goes down, I want it to automatically sell. So it's kind of like a trade order. Like I'll accept coin, but if all of a sudden it goes lower, I want to sell it immediately. That's like total trading function. And we've never spoke about that, but is that possible? Can we do that? I think that could be implemented yeah and i think that it could be um handled on like a profile settings right. like like my default behavior would be to like, stop like off. if the coin goes down 10 percent, sell it automatically yeah and and you could enable or disable these kind of limits and, and orders i love it so actually and and one more thing so i was talking to one of our partners last week and he was saying to me well and you know, digital businesses, um, they need more than a 20 mile radius. But he goes, I know where you stand on that. So I'm not necessarily asking you to change to 20 miles, but the payment system could really be your IP. Like this is something that only you and your team are doing. He goes, can we go ahead and, and issue out the payment system by itself to companies like like really popular digital marketers, like um, say Tony Robbins or something that's selling like a hundred million. Well, if he allows his transactions to be in the coin, well, he could single-handedly really, really move it in a good way. He goes, so would you allow your payment system? Can somebody just adopt just the payment system without the Rhino street? And it caught my attention. I was like, it's actually like a really good idea. Like there's a whole nother market because once we go in, like we create this payment system for us, but it's almost like creating a, like inventing a car because you're too lazy to walk. Like other people are gonna say, um, yeah, we want that. Uh, so it, it just brings a whole nother level of like how much bigger this could get. But in that light, A, is this built to support that? Or B, can we go ahead and create like, um, can we go ahead and create a software package that people could uh, select or opt into using it as just a payment? I think the latter, yeah. If, if we would develop like a software development kit where people could implement our service as they decide fit. So the one thing that's really interesting about using um, that, that really caught my attention with Binance Smart Chain is that it it becomes an asset this token becomes an actual asset and although the rhino wallet would house this token if a if a user or um business owner felt the need to feel more secure they can actually move that to another wallet um that technology is universal in that way so it's not something like that would be limited in that way. A, a lot of things are, I guess I'm saying there's a lot of open doors by using the Binance Smart Chain. So I'm, hope, I'm so happy you said that out loud because I already assumed that. And, uh, and if that wasn't true, we would have had a real problem. <laughs> right, right. No, I understand there's, there's a fear oh there. God, like, stop everything. No, because what, um, also one of our goals is, is to develop Coinbase. And Binance is the largest exchange. And I, I don't think people actually know that. Everyone thinks Coinbase because it's kind of like got the name. But Binance is the largest, best, and safest, period. But I do want to get on Coinbase. And in our you know, private conversations, it's been, well, and if we have like 10 million people all holding accounts, all holding coin, well, why wouldn't Coinbase say, yeah, if we could go ahead and absorb these accounts, well, duh. Um, so if you could just go ahead and, and share that Coinbase is 
we got to work to it, but it is on our radar. Uh, that would be really cool. Yeah, it's, I, I think, something I have to look further into because they have a process of their own where they, over the years, they were pretty um, strict about which coins they would add. They only had, I think, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin for, for yeah. years. Um, lately, in the last two years, I want to say, they've added a lot more coins a lot more rapidly. And yeah, I, I saw that there's like 50 or something on it. It's there's a lot. Yeah. And it, it really kind of blossomed. Um, I'd like to look into what their requirements are and just aim to meet them because it is a great exchange. It's it's not it's not as large as Binance. Right. But it, it is, I think, the largest in America and North America. Yeah. And it's so a publicly we, traded company. Um, so it's, 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 you could trust it, you know, people feel comfortable with Coinbase. Um, and I was speaking to another partner that's like, Ann, have you ever looked at PayPal? I was like, why? They're like, uh, they have coins, but I think there's only like two or three on it. No one ever goes there for coin, but if you're a coin on it, they have a pretty big ecosystem. So what I was sharing with, um, partners last week was there are a lot of doors, like once. See, the thing is, once we get this out, we are going to be the only coin that's backed by the transactions of its own platform, owned by its own participants in a growing field that the participants are directly responsible for growing. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. If everyone on Rhino said, hey, guys, um, just buy the coin. I don't want to talk about like insider trading because it's not a security, but it would be essentially like when everyone was buying uh, Dogecoin. It's like everyone agreed with each other to just buy it, but that was a made up coin with a made up everything. This is actually not only not made up, but it's backed and it's backed by the largest component of America, which is US small business. So I think we're doing it right. So for everyone watching, we're not gonna rush this. Our, our timeline is June 25th, um, but I was actually looking at the calendar. Do you know 4th of July lands on a Monday, which means it's 4th of July weekend. I was, I don't, this isn't me telling everyone we're going to miss our deadline. But if I looked at the, if I looked at the calendar a little bit further before offering June 25th, it would totally be 4th of July weekend. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm a moth and that's a flame. Uh, I'm not saying that's where I'm gravitating. So we're going to hit our timelines, but um, we're not going to push something out that is a dud. Um, also, so I'm, uh, any last words? Because I want to switch to just our, actually, no, keep it, stay on. Anyway, a reward program, because this actually goes into the air table. So for everyone that's been a part of Rhino for since the beginning, you will know that the one thing that makes me rip out my hair, which is why I had to cut it, is our partnership program. It's just been like a total dud. No one really has confidence if things are tracking or not. Every month I go in and just give people coin just because I want everyone to know that at least I, you know, I think they matter. Um, so our referral business program suggests favorite businesses um, will go. So if you look on the left-hand side of your screen in the middle tab, suggest favorite businesses, that will go in the sense, oh, look at, I love Brian. So he's just been suggesting his heart out. Um, and that's amazing. So we'll, that's perfect. So what we could do right there is see, Brian, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Say, okay, there's nine. I can tally that. I could count. Um, and I've been, I've been mulling over the number to go ahead and offer this. And I think what I'm going to do is just be so cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I think I want to offer 100 coin for referral and a hundred coin for every referral that opts in. Because the way I think about it is if a if hundred million businesses opted in, Steve, where would we be? Would we be like, like as, as big as any company ever, a hundred million businesses opted in? I, yeah, I, I don't know <laughs> off the top of my head, but I think we, we would be having Seems good like, problems. Seems like we would have to build up our department a little bit. 
we would have i think we would have to scale up yeah. um but, but yeah point, it's it's built in a scalable way so it's not like there's any prevention from growing yeah so the point of me saying that is so if a hundred million companies opted in and say that costed us or not costed but we invested 200 million coin to get there that leaves us with almost 700 million coins still available, which means we would find different ways to go ahead and do charitable functions, give it to our rhinos. But to have that much demand in businesses would make a coin, especially if we only put 300 on the market, holy gee, holy gosh, gar, darly, whatever. Um, the coin value would, would go through the roof. So I did the thinking and half of me is like, and 100 coin, that's like a lot. And the other half is like, no, that's a, a, a business referral is worth that much to us because the people referring the businesses are referring businesses in their locale. And the money we would have to spend to do the marketing to find those businesses would, would be probably 10 times the amount than just rewarding our people for participating and partnering with us to begin with. So I did want to say that out loud because I did want you to show the suggested businesses so people, so rhinos can see. Um, this is very easy to track. Like we can look at this and just multiply out. As it pertains to once the suggested business opts in, if you could go ahead and click Rhino Street results, that's where they end up going. So when you scroll down all the way, um, you'll see that we have testing, so testing myself, testing at the office, uh, rhinos over there. So we've, so when we go ahead and compare rhino street results to suggested favorites businesses, which we have an entire coding team, we could go ahead and just make a script that will show us that. Um, we can create our own reward program that is far uh, superior and far more uh, generous than we currently have because we're at a point that um, we're there. Like our team is, we, we all have what we need to do. Um, so I wanna announce that verbally. I'm going to put that in the email tomorrow. Um, I'm, I and we are going to make sure that we are going to leave no stone unturned. If it means that we are going to reward everyone to, to the highest extent, the most generous we could do, well, those that take advantage of it are going to actually be the engine of what builds Rhino. So it's not, it's not me saying, oh, you know, I have all this coin laying around, let me give it to someone. No, it's that that person is exponentially important because every person that they recommend is going to re recommend others. So in a sense, Rhino is able to not only value population, but identify the value of recommending population. And just because, we find you to be more valuable than other people is not a craziness part on us. It's a craziness part on, on other people not, not valuing you as much. So as long as you agree that that's possible um, and, and makes sense, of course, then I think we'll leave it there so that everyone sees exactly. Oh, and by the way, Steve, we... We, Steve and I meet on Monday and Friday, and then the rest of the week is in Slack. So if anyone thinks like, oh, they rehearsed this conversation great, <laughs> uh, you don't know us. <laughs> that, like before when you're like, I was thinking of this, I'm like, oh my God, thank God. <laughs> hey, to, to answer your question though, that is possible, the affiliate program, we have the data. Awesome, I love so it. So we could automate um based on that data amazing i'm so happy this is good yeah now we, we've come a long way like this is i'm again i'm completely biased but like i think this is really great stuff <laughs> all right whatever i'm a little giddy and i actually have to work i'm um not that i don't work before but i'm my wife is going to um her best friend's like baby shower or something today and She's like, do you want to come? I was like, do you need me to? She's like, no, I'm going with my mother. I was like, so I could work late? She's like, as long as you're home by seven, because we have to give our son a shower. I'm like, oh my God, I get to work till seven. Yes. So 
I'll be in here doing the subdomain lander content. So if you need me, I'm on Slack. Otherwise, if you'd like to say goodbye to everyone, I'll say goodbye as well. And we will we will kick it and, and get out of here. Yeah, sure. I can stop the share and uh, I'll be working on cleanup and preparing the app for test release. Okay, good. Um, I did commit us to tomorrow morning, so just we got to. Okay, great. Because if you don't, everyone's going to go to this recording because we make it available. It's going to be on YouTube in like a, an hour. And they're going to say, <laughs> Steve said it's it's okay. Yep. No, no pressure. Mark my words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Steve, thank you so much. Everyone, thank you for joining. Love everyone. And I will see you next Wednesday. You all see Friday. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Right. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone.